Hi, right, we're picking up from game three of the candidates match uh, in Bled, Yugoslavia, which uh, took place in 1965 between uh, Leos Portis and Miel Tao, Mikhail Tao, um, or as Yasser Sherwan would say, Michael Tao. Uh, anyway, uh, game one was a draw. Game two was won in spectacular fashion in less than 30 moves by Tao. And um, so here is Portis in game three trying to even things up. As we see, we have a Ninja Indian on the board. Oh, uh, Portis is white here, and Tal is, uh, has a black piece, uh, by the way. So E3, the Rubenstein variation. Let's play Castle, Bishop D3, and D5. And again, um, after the 1961 a match for the world championship with Bavinik. Um you know Bavinik kinda gave like a blueprint to the world basically on how to kinda deal with Tao. Not that um it was all, always successful but players would try to adopt a style of basically um you know drying up the positions. So to keep you know Tao from creating um brilliancies of uh, but just becoming extra active on the board so you kind of see that in this match uh this struggle right here where Portis is kind of trying to you know just dull out things and kind of just get to you know better end game scenarios where whereas Tao is trying to keep things um more alive so to speak <clears throat> okay so after bishop d2 knight bd7 of course, black pretty much has to play c5. Knight e5 takes, d takes, knight e4. Bishop takes, d takes. And now rook fd1. Preparing um, now to snatch the um, e4 pawn. Queen e7. a3. And now... Here's a perfect example, like for instance, Tao here can just can just simply play bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, you know, you know what have you, you know, just having a uh, easy even game, so to speak. You know, you have you know, it's like a regular looking position. However, after a3, Tao plays bishop a5. You know, very provocative. You know, move here. So now, white takes the pawn. Bishop takes bishop. Rook d2. Now queen takes e5. They're trying to get the initiative here. But now, Portis has a good move in knight d6 because that square is weak. And with tempo to boot. Now bishop c6 and rook ad1. So this whole sequence has caused white to get a little bit of an advantage here. If Black had just simply played bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, rook fd8. There would have been none of that. But, you know, Tao's style of play, you know, he's, you know, looking for these complications, you know, whereby he has a chance to seize, you know, this initiative here. But here you can see white has a positional advantage. Both rooks on the only open file, knight on d6. And now you're going to see this fight between this knight and bishop. Rook ad8. Queen b3. Rook d7. And now e4. Okay, now it's... <clears throat> of course, not... Bishop takes e4 because it's simply knight takes e4. Okay, so that's not tactically possible. So e4 by Portish. Queen e6. Now... It's Porter's turn with the white pieces. He just simply plays queen takes e6. You know, keeping with that strategy of, you know, eliminating the dynamic possibilities out of the position. If Tao was playing the white pieces, maybe he would have tried to keep the queens on and play a move like queen g3, for example. So, like, say, queen g3, g6, and then f4. You see something a little more uh, aggressive in the position. And this would have been a good continuation also, just depending on the style of player. Here, Portis just wants to go into an ending where he has like a superior pawn structure and that his knight is better than the bishop. See, so e5, solidifying that knight. Now that knight cannot be moved. 
without black giving up the exchange. Rook c1, rook f5, rook e2, rook f4, f3, rook d4, and f3 creates a, a way for the king to come close to the center. Rook d3, rook c3, and Portis believes in this advantage, this knight over this bishop here. Knight e4, rook d3, knight takes g5, bishop d7, rook e3, d2, king g3, king g7, knight goes back to e4, rook to a2, now c4 protecting the a3 pawn, king g6, h4, h6, h5, king f7, king h3, bishop c6, knight d6, check, and that outpost is deadly on d6. King g3, a6, b5, c takes, a takes, and Tao desperately, you know, looking for counterplay. But Portis is on his game here. So f5, bishop d7, and then just f6 by Portis, and uh, Tao had enough. So you can see in contrast between game two and three, just the battle in, in style, you know, in the... Um, you know, the battle of ideas of what type of games uh, are going to be played here. In this particular game, Portis and his, his uh, ideology uh, went out. He played like a slower kind of game, got the queens off the board, you know, played a nice positional game where he had a superior knight over a bishop and, um, you know, played very well. Whereas Tao tried to take some chances. Again, he could have just played... Um, Bishop takes c3 early and rook fd8 and just kept the position kind of simple. But uh, he opted for complications after bishop a5. And and to me, this is kind of where it went downhill, giving up that d6 square. You know, and that allowed, you know, um, Portis to dominate from here on out.